2008, social gaming became very popular. Facebook became very popular as a platform. 2013, now mobile, is the most interesting new platform on the market. And platforms change each, each year, and this will happen again and again. And more importantly, the evolution of gaming or of business on these platforms repeats itself over and over again because it always follows the same patterns. And knowing these patterns will make you able to understand and anticipate the future and consequently make smart business decisions. And this is what the presentation is all about. So starting with a brief introduction of myself, I'm 30 years old, I co-founded six companies until today. Can you hold on just a minute? I don't think yeah. we're seeing your presentation up there. Oh, so could somebody <laughs> fix that? Because I'm seeing it. <laughs> but I'm sure you'd like to share it with the rest of us as well. <laughs> Definitely. Perfect. Well done. Okay. So let me uh, let me uh, let me uh, go further with a short personal introduction. Thirty years old. I co-founded six companies. Most importantly, here I co-founded SponsorPay, and uh, recently and personally for me, most importantly, Hitfox Group. Four hundred jobs have been created in the six companies I started, and uh, what helped me a lot with that is I love to analyze society, business, and technology. And that also helped me to make some good investment decisions, investing into Facebook and LinkedIn before they went public on the secondary market. And that hopefully also helps me to understand the platform patterns for gaming platforms. So brief introduction to Hitfox. We are a game distribution group, a holding with now three companies all focused on acquiring users for, at this moment, 160 clients. And our uh, vision is to start two new companies in the same space each year over and over again. So we are a company builder in the game distribution space now with 80 employees. So let's get started talking about patterns. But before I talk about the repeating individual patterns, I want to do an introduction. Why do these patterns exist? Let's have a look at an analogy. So for me, platforms are just like countries. Both countries and, so and societies and platforms, they both have rules and regulations. They see a certain pattern of growth and of decline. And both within these platforms and within the countries, you have competition between different organizations and institutions, and between countries and societies like China and the US, you have competition, as well as you have competition between different platforms such as Apple or such as Google. And then countries can be run, can be governed, democratic or dictatorial. And the web as a platform is run pretty democratically. And Facebook and Apple are as platforms run pretty dictatorial. Some more similarities. And finally, and for you probably most importantly, you have to pay tax. So just consider the 30% Facebook and Apple are you as developers, as publishers requesting you. Just consider us as the VAT of a very big and powerful country. So looking at it from the other side, countries are just platforms without an underlying technology. And platforms such as Facebook and Google are platforms which rely on other platforms such as the internet or such as the countries we have. 
So knowing this and knowing that the history of societies and of countries repeats itself over and over again, it's no surprise that also the development and the evolution of gaming platforms repeats itself as well over and over again. And knowing these patterns will help you to make the right decisions. So before we move into the six patterns I identified as most important for myself and hopefully also as important for you to make decisions, let's speak about ecosystems because they are a concept very close to platforms. Whenever a new platform, a new major platform emerges, it comes with certain new technology standards, such as APIs to program on Facebook or new technology standards for mobile. And it comes also with new rules and regulations different from the rules and regulation on different other platforms. And also, and probably most importantly, it comes with new audiences and with new usage patterns. So when Facebook as a new platform emerged, users were playing very different on Facebook than they were playing on other gaming platforms before. And this all leads to a situation with so many new things going on where there is a big need for specialized knowledge. And this specialized knowledge is not efficiently created within the big organizations of the traditional players because they are so much focused on their core business. So what happens when a new platform emerges, which is important, new conferences get started, new media is specializing on the new platforms and on the knowledge necessary, new organizations in general emerge. So whenever there's a new major platform that's a big opportunity for startups to specialize in that knowledge, get started there and uh, have a win on this platform. In the end, with all the new organizations created, with new media, new conferences, a new sub-ecosystem is created with each new gaming platform, which is then a sub-ecosystem of the bigger overall gaming ecosystem. So now, knowing that, let's move into the patterns. So pattern one. I think it's a pretty important pattern. Pattern one is from marketing to product. So whenever a new platform emerges, the users on the platform are pretty uninformed. So this is a situation you can compare when you're traveling to a different country. You're basically in a new situation. You don't know the market. So in a, in a, in a tourist city, how do you choose a restaurant? Basically you don't know the quality of the restaurants, so you rely on marketing and sales and on what they tell you. And this often leads not to the best decision, but it is what you need. So marketing is important on new platforms. But then, once the platform matures and users learn on the platform, media is there, is filtering, conferences are doing a good job in filtering, you get educated and the decision for the user is more like choosing a restaurant in his hometown, and there he chooses the restaurant with the best quality and not with the best marketing. So this is exactly the situation users face on a new gaming platform, and basically leading to a situation where, from a business standpoint, the most rational view to act is to focus on marketing first and really make it a focus. This was also what made, for example, Zynga so successful on Facebook initially, but then use the traction you gain over time to build the best product because this is in the end what's the long-term win. So marketing wins on early platforms with uninformed users, product wins in the long term. Coming to the platform hype cycle, a pretty well-known pattern I would say but still important to act and to follow on that. So whenever the new platform is there and it's growing, the early platform habitants, the early publishers on the platform, on a successful platform, see tremendous success. And because they see so much success, they earn a lot of money. In the end, expectations for being on that platform rise very fast. Competition is going in, but still everybody earns a lot. So expectations somewhere peak 
when they can't match the reality anymore and when everybody or the average is having a bad business on the platform. So that's when the cycle turns down, falling into bad profits, bad expectations, into a depression on the platform. So everybody is more conservative, more pessimistic about the future than he actually should. People are leaving the platform, Competi competition is moving out, things are normalizing themselves again, and finally leading to a situation in a normal market where expectations and business reality match each other. That's the hype cycle pattern, and it's important to be aware of it if you think about decisions for seeking investment, for how much should you invest into a user, how much competition should you anticipate in a certain period of that uh, platform cycle. So it's a very standard pattern, but be aware of it. Then looking at the wild, wild west pattern, that's probably uh, one uh, less common known pattern. So on a new platform, regulation is very low. So it's a situation like in a new country, like the Wild Wild West in the US in the 17th or in the 1800s. So regulation is low, chances are very high, and nobody is really observing what you do. There is no enforcement of law or very low enforcement of law. There is no media observing and controlling, leading to a situation where Wild Wild West tactics can be very successful. Example, Facebook in the beginning, it was very successful to spam users, to be very aggressive on virality, to monetize very heavy in the early times. And companies really built a huge user base on that and had an unfair advantage over everybody jumping in later on that. So that was a highly successful tactic until it got regulated with the Scamville scandal and with other platform enforcements Facebook took. So later on, a few out of all the publishers who involved in those tactics were punished, but for the majority, it paid out to involve in those wild, wild west tactics. So uh, it was a successful strategy. Same on mobile with the bot thing. Hundreds of companies involved in that and only a few really got punished. So it paid off in the early times, but now with the platform maturing, it becomes more and more a regulated environment, more and more the environment of a mature country where you have to follow rules and where following these rules is also very rational just from your egoistic business viewpoint. So concluding, be early on the promising platforms and uh, be aware that Wild Wild West tactics might pay off there very well. So make your decision whether you want to involve or not, but just be aware competition will tend to involve in a Wild Wild West manner on each new unregulated platform. So this leads us to another pattern, and this is the increasing power of the platform owner. If you ever tried negotiating something with Facebook or Apple, I think probably you don't because you know there is no chance of negotiating something with them right now because they have a very strong power position. But this is different in the very early times of a platform. In the very early times of a platform, the developer relies on you, or the platform owner relies on you as publishers and developers to deliver the value to the platform. So it's very friendly, open-minded, supports you, doesn't tax you too high, and makes everything you join the platform. Then with the more increasing success of the platform, higher user base, everything, the platform owner becomes aware of the power he has now because he's delivering something very valuable and you're kind of addicted to being on the platform. His power increases and so does his leverage for negotiation in a fair or in an unfair way, so does his leverage increase for increasing his tactics and other, some platform owners might also 
be engaged in copying successful applications. So basically, the conclusion is, whenever you are on a platform, it's worthwhile being early to really adopt those platforms early to be successful there. And also, it's important to always be aware you do business in somebody else's house and must follow their rules. And there is a certain risk that he takes away your business in the future or makes it less profitable. So this is what's happening, especially if there's one dominant platform. So I think for the good of the ecosystems, there's a situation where there's not one dominant developer of a platform. So coming to the acceleration pattern. So basically, when browser games emerged as a new ecosystem, as a new gaming platform in 2005, that was a very different and far away ecosystem from the previous box game ecosystem. So two gaming ecosystems, but things work very different. So programming was very different, release cycles, marketing, everything was different. So this led to the great situation of early publishers and developers of browser games, where there was a five-year-long period of growth on the platform. A lot of people became rich on that platform before finally consolidation happened in 2009, 2010. So a very long cycle, because just there was no other ecosystem closely connected where other competitors might have jumped in, and the traditional guys like EA, they were just too slow and didn't recognize the opportunity early enough. So it took a long way. Then, 2008, social gaming became important. And social gaming was again created, was again different to browser gaming, but it was not that different to browser gaming, how browser gaming was to box gaming. So a new ecosystem was created, but it was more closely connected to the ecosystem of uh, browser gaming than uh, the browser gaming to the box system. So basically two ecosystems close by. So social gaming had to grow to consolidation cycle of about two to three years. So it was shorter. It was still, it took the EA guys and all the traditional guys a time to figure it out, but they saw the pattern of a new digital ecosystem already the second time, so they were a bit faster in reacting. And then for the browser game guys, it was also easier in moving to social games because their processes, their company cultures were not that different. So there was social gaming in 2008 when it emerged and uh, now we are in a situation where the next big important uh, uh, ecosystem and platform emerged and mobile is now the dominant platform. But again, it's a digital platform. It follows certain release cycle patterns, certain marketing patterns such as CPI-driven uh, uh, marketing, very KPI-driven marketing. So it's again an ecosystem closely connected to both social and browser gaming. And so now we have three digital ecosystems pretty close to each other and one far away old boxed ecosystem. But also the box guys, they saw the pattern of a new digital ecosystem emerging now the third time. So they get smarter and better in adapting, buying, buying faster, splitting up studios to develop only focused on mobile. So basically, this all leads to a situation where a lot of potential competition can easily jump into the mobile ecosystem. And this is happening right now. Social game companies move in, browser game companies move in, and the traditional guys move in. And so this leads us to a situation where the competition for mobile gaming is heating up faster and more intense than on any other platform before. And with each potentially new digital distribution-based platform that will again be a TV or whatever, be rather closely connected to the previous ecosystems there. So competition for new ecosystems and platforms that are not materially different than those we have right now, it will always heat up faster and faster again from now on until there is a breakthrough in something totally different and then we have a longer cycle again from growth to consolidation. So taking this acceleration pattern and thinking about the three different 
ecosystems we have in line now based on digital distribution. It's not far to think uh, about what's happening next. So basically, uh, on a young platform, we have very high technology specificity. So browser emerges as a new gaming platform. It's really about knowing how the programming works there, knowing how about distribution works there, how about marketing works there. It's a very high platform specificity. So on a new platform like that, specialized companies are successful. This is why Bigpoint and Gameforge and all the other browser game companies became successful there first and not the traditional guys because they focus on what was the bottleneck. And the bottleneck was not producing a game there of a certain quality, it was more about understanding the platform in the early platform days. And then platforms mature and now programming and releasing a game on browser somehow became a commodity knowledge. Everybody can do that. And so it's not anymore a competitive advantage if you know the platform well because everybody knows the platform well. So on an old platform, you cannot differentiate yourself by being a platform-focused player who understands what's going on there. So this is important to know. Um, so basically be aware whenever there's a new platform, that means there's a great new startup chance to jump in, build a new company based on that. But over time, the advantage will fade away. And your company, which was once successful because they were so specialized in this platform, needs to be successful because you really have other competitive advantages. And this is happening right now because our three digital platforms are maturing. So, as an outlook, uh, for me it's very clear the future is cross-platform publishing. So, in the old world, which is still today's world, there is a platform-focused publisher, like a mobile games publisher, that has the knowledge and the network and the right people to be successful on that platform. And then he starts to build strategic games, action games, sport games, 3D-heavy uh, uh, games. So, He's focused on one platform, but then on many different genres and audiences. This is the old world. Soon, this old world will expand, and there will not be a single, I'm exaggerating now, a single mobile game publisher left, because that's not anymore a differentiation focus. And once you have a successful IP on mobile, it's not so difficult to repeat that for Facebook and everything and profit from all the cross-platform advantages you have, cross-promotion, same brand. So this is what going to be happen is uh, while we still have now publishers that consider themselves a mobile game publisher, today, in the future, we will have publishers besides a few powerhouses that will do all genres, all platforms. Publishers will be focused on one audience and one genre, like Wargaming is very successful in making 3D-heavy graphic-based games focused on a male audience, and they have a big success in cross-promoting and just a big success because their product is superior because they specialize in this kind of product and audience. And so in the future, Publishers, which are not the one, two, three, four powerhouses that, can, that build the best organizations and go through all platforms, all audiences, those publishers must focus on a specific audience and genre to be successful. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. We have time for a question or two for Jan. Apparently, people in Hamburg don't ask questions. Either that or our, our presenters are so good that there's nothing to ask. Okay, last call for questions for Jan. Thanks again.